Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and uh, in this short video I'm going to look at printing on a particular type of paper using this, the Epson P700. Now this uh, applies perfectly well to the P900 as well, except you can use larger sheets of paper in it. From a print quality point of view the two are identical, the profiles are the same, everything. Now the paper I'm going to be using is a Baraita style paper. Now this, remember Printer marketing covers and sticks to everything you deal with when you come to printing and the names for things. What do I mean by Baraita paper? Well, um, technically it means it's used some barium sulfate somewhere in the mix to give it density and to also give a particular style of surface. Now the surface finish can vary. And this one, this is the one that was originally released over here, Epson traditional photo paper. Um, it has a, it, it looks like a, a darkroom print. It looks like a glazed, semi-gloss darkroom print. Uh, the paper, it's a slightly warmish white, so there's um, no real um, significant amounts of optical brightener in this. But Baraita as a style tends to mean heavier weight papers. So this is quite a thick paper. Um, it's a nice quality paper, but needs to be used carefully uh, with good profiles. Um, the original version of it, the surface was a bit fragile and it marked very easily. Now I'm just going to put it into the printer there. Um, it comes up now, I, I've profiled this. I'm going to print a black and white image here. Uh, got black and white I find works very well on it, but so does colour. Um, I'm just picking black and white here just to show an example. Now it's come up, asked me the paper type. Paper size, well you know, it's A3+, 13 inch by 19 inch. It says premium luster. Now I've picked the premium luster when I made my profiles. There are other settings available, media settings, and they don't necessarily make much of a difference here with the, uh, when you're actually printing black and white. Now with color, you profile with the best media setting, and I found that premium luster works very well. If you get other papers, check carefully for both what the recommended setting, media setting is, and the profile. Remember the two work together. You don't just set the media. Now, you can, and if it's an Epson type, it will, for color, automatically select an appropriate ICC profile, a printer profile. Now, you don't use profiles for black and white, or at least I don't, um, for a printer like this. Better printers, you they tend to have a black and white print mode. Now, for the Epson, this is the ABW print mode. Uh, Canon have got one on their drivers for their better printers as well. It tends to produce better looking black and white results. Um, and it's uh, yeah, just however you choose to do it, stick to it, have a look at the settings. I've got quite a lot of stuff specifically looking at black and white printing on the P700, P900, uh, both written articles, which tend to have all the detail and a few videos as well looking at them. But this paper is a good Baraita style paper. Um, I, I just call them style papers because remember, this is a lot of marketing in this. Um, I'll comment a bit more on that when I actually have a look and see how the print comes out. Now I've opened up the print, it's black and white image. Um, I've opened up, it's in Epson print layout, everything's set um, for the ABW mode, all the things I need. Um, I'm printing at high quality. I'm not printing at any of the absolute highest quality settings because in testing I've done, I found you don't really get any benefit from them. And this one will work fine at this. So all I need to do is to actually click on print and it will process the image and send it to the printer. Well, printer's waking up. Paper's just loading. I can check once it starts printing that everything's okay uh, through the window at the top here. Yep, it's printing. Tells me I've got eight minutes left. Just check that there, there's the picture. Go back to that. Now, the ABW print mode, 
I've had quite a few people say, well, why wouldn't I use one of my really high quality printer profiles? Printer profiles are almost always made for color printing. Even if you try and optimize a profile, if you make them yourselves, even if you try and optimize a profile for black and white printing, you have no control over the exact mix of inks that are used. That's taken care of in the printer firmware and the computer that drives the printer internally and the printer driver. You have no direct control over the ink channels. Now, when you use the ABW mode, it has been specifically set up to use not quite all the inks and to use them in slightly different ratios than it would use when printing color. The idea is to produce a better, more consistent looking black and white mode. So if your printer has a specific black and white mode, then try it. So I've, I've, I've written a lot more about this elsewhere, but in general, it is better. The only exceptions I found to this are when you start getting at uh, cheaper consumer level printers, smaller printers, where a profile can actually make the difference between black and white that looks awful and black and white that is okay-ish. Now, this is a pigment ink printer, which is always what I would choose for my black and white work. Um, you can, some good quality dye-based printers can give good black and white results, but I find for consistency under variable lighting, then using the black and white mode, pigment inks in a printer gives you that extra bit of quality. I want proper black and white. I don't want black and white images and prints that look slightly green under some lighting, or if I take them near a window, they look slightly purple, slightly magenta colored. I want bang on black and white. Now, there is some colors being mixed in with this. And if you look at the, close enough at the image, if you look at the dots, you will see that there is, there is some colored dots in there. That's because the blacks themselves may not be exactly neutral, it varies by the type of ink and the mix for it. They may not be completely spot on. So there's a little bit of color mixed in. And also the printer has to allow for the color of the paper. Um, and different papers have different whitenesses and in when they're set up for when the ABW mode is set up and there are unfortunately f relatively few controls you've got. You can adjust the tint and tone a little bit here, but they're relatively small adjustments. And what I would say is if you are going to look at tinting or toning an image, do it as much as you think looks okay on the screen and then halve it and start at that because almost always if you try and adjust toning, tinting by screen, when it comes out on a sheet of paper, it just looks stronger. Now, if you like strong tones, tints, then good. Personally, I don't. So uh, I don't use this very, very rarely just for experimenting. Um, I will use some of the controls here for adjustment. Anyway, the print is coming out. Um, it's looking fairly good. And so we just wait for it to come. And I'm told I've got five minutes left. This is looking fairly good under this lighting. Um, a slight health warning uh, about videos and showing prints is that uh, video can easily pick up slight tones and tints and color tints in prints that aren't really there. Um, it's quite tricky to light everything and I'm shooting this in my kitchen, which was never set up for as a video studio. So uh, hopefully this looks relatively neutral and looking at this print and this light and these are LED lights, this looks pretty neutral. I'm not seeing any strong color tint. Um, I'll find out when I edit the video whether there is a, a slight tint. But if you do see a residual tint in the print here, um, it's not real. Uh, well, it is real to the camera. It's not real to me looking at it and I'm the one that counts. Now, it's printed very well. I noticed it did just touch the corner, caught a little bit here. There's not a mark. I can see where it's touched the mechanism. What I would say is this is an oldish pack of paper I'm using here. And you do need to check 
the edges very carefully that there's no curl or anything. Now this print is pretty good for this, I don't get problems with it. But um, there is a black and white print, uh, let me just put that, uh, try and get rid of the glare. As you can see it's a shiny finish, it's a nice dark print. Um, the blackness from it, from a paper like this, is really quite good and this is fairly similar to things I would have expected to get in the darkroom. Now, um, once again, this darkroom bit, um, it's marketed as looking like darkroom. Now, even today, with the massive resurgence of film, uh, oh, sorry, no, it isn't really, is it? it's, it's, it's nothing compared to what it used to be. Um, the, very few people have darkroom experience to be able to tell you that a print accurately looks like something they got from the darkroom. Now, some people will look at that and go, ah, oh, yes, that looks like a such and such paper. And they'll come out with some obscure paper that hasn't been produced since 1967. And there are two or three other people alive who still remember what it looks like. Well, that's good for them. I'm going, what does it look like as a black and white print? My recollections of darkroom printing are a minimum 25 years ago and recollections drift, particularly with stuff like print quality. Um, I'm going to say this looks good. Um, if you're interested in thicker prints like this, nicer looking prints, then check out different types of Baraita papers. Um, I've looked in the past at Baraita papers from Innova, from Paper Spectrum or Pinnacle, uh, which is a company here in Leicester where I live, also Photospeed and also, you know, there, there are loads of people make, um, you know, make various papers, this. But bear in mind, when you're looking at them, that marketing has been at work. I mentioned that it's a thick print. Yeah. Now, I know from talking to people who sell stuff at shows and the like, they always put prints out like this for people to pick up and handle because the thick feel to it gives a feel of quality. Well, that feel of quality is aimed at the people doing the printing. If I produce a print like this, I don't expect anybody who wants the print to pick it up and handle it. They're going to frame it. They're going to do something. So really, it's about what the print looks like. Just remember all this stuff about the feel of darkroom paper is pure marketing. Bearing that in mind, Baraita style papers are still what I will choose for a lot of my work, particularly black and white. So uh, hopefully this has been of, of use. Um, Please do ask any questions in the video if you've got any. Happy to answer them. Um, I've got the printer here for a while, so if there are any other specific areas you want covering, just let me know. Thanks for watching, and please do subscribe if you found it useful. I've got lots more stuff to do for this, so thank you.